everybody, Splint here. Welcome to Splint Reacts. If you are a returning subscriber, then guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay guys, so we're getting into some more scrubs today. And I do want to disclose to you guys that I have seen a spoiler already because of the thumbnail <laughs> that's on my screen. So I can see that Molly Clock is back. Haven't watched any scrubs recently, but Nico says hi. But I do remember really enjoying the last two episodes. I thought they were great. Guys, I've been really sick all week. I haven't watched anything. I have spent most of it in bed just editing. Um, you can probably hear I'm still quite congested. Uh, let's just get into episode 19, which is called My Best Laid Plans. Kylie and I still hadn't slept together, but I had a feeling her four week booty embargo was about to end. Four weeks. Wait right here. It's for your scooter. JD, oh, that's actually so cute. <laughs> Wouldn't that be super expensive? Why is it always about sex with you? It's not. I'm just really proud of my abs. Or ab. Good for you. Baby, I don't understand why we can't discuss this after the A-team. Tur, a lot of married couples hit roadblocks their first year, but nothing's gonna get resolved if we don't get our issues out in the open. Let's do this. Okay, well, what, what it's Bobby. Hey, hey, there he is. Worst timing. This is our problem. We're trying to have a serious conversation here, but you're more concerned about how your other wife is doing. <laughs> Every little thing with you becomes a big issue. You make mountains out of molehills. When have I ever made a mountain out of a molehill? If you can't remember to put the cap on the toothpaste, how are we gonna raise our children? <laughs> I guess I could work on it a little. Okay. It's annoying. Uh, I keep pretty organized, so that would annoy me. I wouldn't flip out like she did, but it's annoying. Was ang you because I was bored and I thought that just might drive you crazy. Oh, you're a wonderful teacher. Stop ang me in front of my residents. It's unprofessional. You're right, Barbie. Where's Dave? The one who could beatbox. Remember him? It's best to start fluid resuscitation. Bong! <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep moving. You know, I don't really appreciate you messing with my lady. <laughs> Blonde doctor and I are gonna end up together. I'm talking the whole shebang. House in the burbs, Volvo in the driveway, dog fighting ring in the basement. Oh my god. You wanna place a wager? <coughs> I do, but here I really have no need for a cracked thermos and two pounds of keys. How about my van for your Porsche? Ooh. Bet. Bet. I love it. Kissing, right? Mm. And she's like, I think it's a little hot in here. And she starts pulling down her skirt. <laughs> To be continued. Thank God Turk left because I can't think about sex anymore. Luckily for me, there isn't a whole lot of temptation in a hospital. Howdy, stranger. There she is. Hey, stranger. Ah! Oh, ouch. So Molly's back in town. She def She's wearing thongs. Molly? Oh, oh, yeah. You look fantastic. Thank you. How's Milwaukee? It's okay. I'm just here to see a patient. <gasps> it is so good to laugh like this with you again. If he doesn't shut up, his first surgery tomorrow will be removing that cell phone from his own ass. Will you give him a break. He's talking to his wife. Who are you talking to? Rosetta. Your college girlfriend? Yeah. Can I say hi? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Hey, Rosanna. Hi, <laughs> This phone is indestructible. If it has a camera, I'm still getting one. <laughs> We're just friends! Uh, I was just friends once with a Vietnamese girl. Long story short, I'm on the hook for sending Trong Tree Kelso to college and he doesn't want to go to a state school. I've called the brain trust together for- Oh, they're back! Burned down our apartment. I have an idea, but we're gonna need a tugboat. Tugboat's an arson. That's all I ever get from you guys. <laughs> I saved you from that eagle, Randall. I saved your job. From an eagle. I'm afraid I have to find a new brain trust. Gentlemen. I, don't want I to saw Ted sitting stop behind what you're him. Doing and focus on me. <laughs> so you seeing anyone? <laughs> the way they all stopped. God, I'd love to get with Molly. Dude, you're pretty horny for a guy who claims to be getting it on a nightly basis. What are you implying? Well, let's just say a little birdie told me that you and Kylie haven't slept together. It's been a month. Oh, really, Turk? Has it been a month? Because time just flies when you're dry humping your way through three pairs of cords. What? 
you go out with Molly and you have a great time while she's in town, but once she leaves, you go to Kylie and you tell her you want to get your exclusive on. That is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. You want to get Elliot and get in good with her best friend. Who's Elliot? It's like... <laughs> The way I got my girlfriend in junior high was by getting her best friend to like me. And how'd you do that? I posed as her dad so she could rent a car. I lost my hair in eighth grade. <laughs> Tough break five. Tough break five. <laughs> we should be friends. Uh, okay. Do you like vanning? It's like taking a long drive in a car, only uh, it's in a van. Could you hold on for one sec? She's an idiot. Oh my god. I found your cell phone in the parking lot. You got three missed phone calls, all from a Rosanna. Isn't that your ex-girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, get out of there. Hey, I'm getting out of here. Do you want to grab a beer? They say the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. Look, I made a bet with Dr. Cox that you would go out with me, and if I win, I get his Porsche. Do you mind? I am trying to have a private moment with my man. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. I got lipstick on you. <laughs> no, leave it. <laughs> I actually really like that. So are you coming over tonight? Actually, Kylie, I, I can't tonight. I never thought I'd see a jumpsuit wearing, van driving, vomit cleaning, no good, confounded, Frankenstein looking buffoon like you get a girl like Barbie. Enjoy, Joey. Kelsey's wild. Baby, I don't have to answer this. <laughs> it's cool. I got the ring that matters, right? Mm -hmm. Nurse Turkleton, I want to talk to you about these dish parts. We can talk later. <laughs> Did Dr. Cox pay up? He says that he needs to see us on an actual date. Okay, uh, meet me at Stanwix? Sure. Okay. okay. <laughs> Can't go clubbing tonight. Daddy's got a date. Oh my god, Where am I going out there? <laughs> oh, stop it. So you guys think I'm overreacting about this whole Turk thing? Phone calls from an ex would drive me nuts. I knew how to get rid of both of them, but I can't do that to Turk. If you don't do it, I will. I'll explain later. Just lose the extra bitches. Oh my god. Turk, share with him your feelings. That's what he wants. Yeah. Come on. I'll drive you. I gotta go to dinner anyway. Goodness me, this show can be so random sometimes. We should probably go too, it's getting late. Oh no, 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 I just ordered two drinks. Oh my god. Hey Turk. I promise I will visit you soon. Please stop talking to your ex. Anything for you, you know that. Hmm. Didn't you say Dr. Cox was coming at eight? Oh, I'm sure he'll be here soon. <laughs> it's tough making new friends in Milwaukee. If people aren't getting to know you, then they're missing out. I knew at that moment what would happen if I reached over and brushed the hair out of her eyes. Is this actually happening? I think so, right? But I didn't do that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> How did the Porsche drive? Wait, why did we just go out if you already have his car? Oh, my goodness. This is so very delicious and filling. I don't think I'm going to be able to eat the rest of the evening. It'll take my keys to go, though. Yippee!
You're unbelievable. You're the only one around here that treats me like a real person. Aww. I know that uh, you don't think about me the way that I think about you, but just pretending for today somehow made me feel good for a change. Aw, date him. It's okay. I actually had a good time. <laughs> Thanks. Aw. Elliot. Wow, I think that's truly the first, like, human moment for him. I'm sorry, I hope it's okay that I stopped by. <laughs> what was that for? I was thinking about how patient you've been with me, how right things feel. Wait, are you saying that you're ready? Awesome. <laughs> I was out with this girl tonight that I totally could have had sex with, but it was easy for me to blow her off because I was excited to be with you. I was in trouble, and if I didn't play my cards right, I knew what could happen. Clouds in your eyes, down your face they pour. I actually really like the way that this like sped up version is being done. All you have to do is cry. Yes, all you have to do is cry. Unfortunately, that's what did happen. Who wants to risk something important just for a silly piece of cake? I did it! Cut off all ties with Rosanna. Forever. How'd you do that so quickly? It's easy. I just told her I was married. You've been talking to this girl you used to sleep with, and you never told her you were married? It's no big deal. Because if you're lucky, maybe you won't be married for much longer. Mm-hmm. Baby! Really pretty song. I think that one's probably gonna go in my Spotify. So as not to disturb the cat, <laughs> I'm going to do my recap facing this way, but that was a really good episode. Um, I think when these issues come up about Carla and Turk, I get a little bit like annoyed, you know, or basically any episode that has to do with cheating, because I think that when people say like, I could never cheat on you, I would never cheat on you. Like it's a nice thought, but realistically, Everybody has the capacity to cheat and that's why people set themselves boundaries. Turk has the capacity to cheat on Carla and vice versa. So <clears throat> even I mean like even if he felt like he wasn't he would never do it in that moment, he has the capacity. So setting yourself boundaries whenever you're in a relationship is really important. So the fact that we found out at the end of that episode that Turk didn't tell Rosanna or whatever that he was married. I can understand uh, Carla's frustration there, but I think setting boundaries has to come kind of hand in hand with having trust. So, yeah. And trusting that your partner will respect those boundaries in particular. It was nice to see Heather Graham back. Kelso's got a son, or another son, um, and I loved like that little human moment from the janitor with Elliot. I think probably the episode before that was the episode when maybe when he showed a bit of levity towards JD um, after his dad died, just like a little bit. But that was really cool, it was nice to see that side of him. So yeah, let's get straight into episode 20, I can't see which is called My Boss's Free Haircut. I'm gonna stay at Elliot's for a few more days. Yeah, I figured as much. I bought you some things. Your slippers. Remember that note you put on the toilet to remind me to put the seat down? Looking at it was making me sad. We'll have brunch on Sunday and we'll see where we're at. I'm gonna be where you're at while we're trying to figure out where we're at. Think they'll work it out? Yeah. Turk was depressed. 
I should call her. Turk? That fool is probably disgusting. The one thing I do know is when a woman wants her space, you give her her space. My sixth grade girlfriend taught me that. No, Olivia. I won't leave you alone until you explain why you ignored me on the bus. I hope she's dead. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm taking you to a carnival downtown tonight. What do you say? It reminds me of Carla. Why? Dude, carnival. Remove the niv and switch to Elena, and you got Carla. <laughs> I cannot talk or be talked to while I'm on the toilet, and I also cannot talk or be talked to by someone who's on the toilet. You told me yesterday, Elliot. Yet you still managed to knock this morning and ask if I wanted coffee. Oh, I just thought that... Up, up, up. She's a nervous pooper. That never happened, or I won't poo again for two months. <laughs> I hate March. You realize two years ago this Sunday my mom died? Plus, last March you got that hideous haircut, remember? <laughs> Only better, I'm sure Turk's just as miserable. <laughs> my tummy's starting to rumble. Dirty vomit. A lot of sad things in a hospital, but nothing's quite as sad as a dermatologist that's just been paged, milking it for all it's worth. Call for a consult? Mr. Warner, do you <laughs> see what you've made me do? You have forced me to pull the attending dermatologist away from his Batney seminar and validate his most ridiculous of career choices. Hey, skincare is very important. You, my friend, look so damn leathery, I'm honestly tempted to wrap you around a baseball, cinch you up with a belt, and stick you under my mattress so that you couldn't broken in for the big game on Sunday. <laughs> oh, my God. Have a great day. You yeah, look like a purse. Perry, a word. <laughs> the head turn. I am sick and tired of listening to people complain about being called fatties, dummies, boozers, losers, winos, tubbos, tokers, smokers, and jamokers. When exactly was the last time you treated a patient? Now you listen to me better. <laughs> Congratulations, Bob. They just named you chief of medicine. Bingo! Smell you later, Betty. Fine. You want me to take a patient? I'll take a patient. Oh, this is gonna be a good episode. We stayed up too late. It was our first annual interracial buddy movie night. We had to. You know, I'm still pissed that you thought Turner and Hoot. First annual interracial buddy night. I'll paint me as a racist just because I thought black guy when I heard the name Hooch. Yeah, JD, what's up? <gasps> it's Mr. Mosby! <laughs> no biggie, happens all the time. <laughs> my goodness me, my childhood. What is going on with Turkey? Doesn't even seem bummed out. I uplifted his spirits. How did you do that? Because Carla is just bottoming out, man. I mean, I'm not even supposed to be here at work today, and I just came to use the bathroom. Quiet on the crapper? Yeah. It's like she just stores everything up until my cheeks hit the seat. I just think she's exempt from the rule. Nobody is exempt. <laughs> Find some way to lift Carla's spirits up. What's going on? We are going to celebrate your mom's death. I mean, your mom's life. Though we're going to celebrate your dead mom's life. <laughs> I even got a cake. Wow. Does it say dead anywhere on it? Nope. <laughs> Real nice outfit there, Bobo. Perry, you just go right ahead and say what you want, because Dr. Bob Kelso is back in action, and he hasn't missed a step. Now, where do we keep the sick people? Hey, friend. I switched shifts so we could hang out tonight. Hell yeah. There's no beer in the fridge. You know what? We're gonna have to make a stop and pick up some hooch. Yeah, Turk? <laughs> Talking about the beer. Oh, that's no problem, buddy. All right. <laughs> Just seems like you could have said beer. Uh, won't happen again. Won't happen again. <laughs> He's so young. Weird. I mean, I want to follow him down the hall and crack him over the head, but I'm so drunk right now. <laughs> you know I was skeptical, but it's been kind of nice reminiscing about my mom. It's about to get a yeah. whole lot nicer. <laughs> Always is. Hi, sweetie. It's mom. I just got to tell you how much I love oh you. Oh, my God. It's JD's old answering machine. Carla. God, those batteries. Again. It seems like you never had time for me anymore. Carla! Aww. Elliot's trying. 
What we are dealing with are venostasis ulcers, most likely because of your weight. Wow, you figured out that I'm fat. Okay, moving on from the numbers I'm seeing on your fasting. Don't be rude, lady. I'm suspecting... Metabolic syndrome? Yes. Now, this condition is not that rare. One in five people have it. Stop doing that! Hmm. I graduated first in my class at Stanford in 1972. You graduated 12th in your class in 1968. She Googled your ass. <laughs> Last summer, Turk and I were forced to choose between helping to stem a hepatitis C outbreak in the inner city or going to bartending school. He's either gonna get too drunk and he won't make it or he's gonna do something dumb. It was our last hurrah. Stay here and drink for Carlos. Well, let's be doing it for Carlos. For Carlos! Let's do this! It wasn't this kind of fun? It stopped. Other times, it's a lot harder than it. Carlos looked like a raccoon. <laughs> Damn it, young lady, let me in. This is my hospital. Hey, Bob. Just trying to keep myself from spending all day in there with her. Such a dog. Yeah. <laughs> you, Bob. Except with a hangover that would slay a walrus, it's all worth it. Especially when you know that at this very moment, your best friend is at brunch saving his marriage. What time is it? You could blame JD, but... Tuck's an adult. Hey, Elliot, do me a favor. What do you mean, say hooch? Oh my God, what? <laughs> say hooch again, it will be the last thing you ever say. <laughs> <laughs> he was mad, wasn't he? Oh, hooch is crazy. Listen, tell Carla it's my fault because I kept Turk out all night and he overslept. I'm so sorry about last night, but I already explained to Carla how you overslept. And now she wants to know when you want to meet up. I didn't oversleep. I decided not to go. <laughs> Okay. Can you open that door? Okay, you made it up here without passing out or vomiting. Now just calmly and eloquently explain that you can't open the door right now and he'll be on his way. You open that door? Well done. Are you mocking <laughs> me? Is he just drunk two nights in a row? Isn't this a different day? <laughs> oh my God. Hello, my lady. <laughs> He's going to help you create a diet and exercise plan so I never have to see you in here again. Ugh, yeah. so dramatic. I'm having a gastric bypass. But, Miss Goldman, you're only 25. And I really don't think... How are you not getting this? I don't care what you think. You can totally talk to people once they're gone. I used to talk to her maid, Consuela, all the time. When did she die? When I was 11. At least that's what my dad told me. I mean, I found out after college that he actually had her deported for putting knives in the fork drawer. Jesus. Oh! 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 Holy frick! First my parents get divorced, now you and Carl are all messed up. No, I just can't help thinking, marriage shouldn't be this hard. So, you're my gastric bypass. You got any questions? Nope. See you in the OR tomorrow. I'll be the one with the mask on. When the hell did patients stop respecting us? I really tried to help that young woman and she rolled over me like Enid's wheelchair over Baxter's tail. Anyway, Jeez. I couldn't handle the patient, so go ahead and take your shots. I want to, Bob. My first patient today was a snot-nosed little punk who wouldn't let me give him a rectal exam unless I said pretty please first. And when I first started out, I liked to take this old white coat out, get a free haircut, a nice table at a restaurant. Hell, I never once got a speeding ticket. Today, people think of us as drug dispensing walking lawsuits who are in fact less informed than their internet phones. So that's what that damn thing was. <laughs> I spoke to the groundskeeper. He'll come over as soon as he finishes burying Paul Newman. Different Paul Newman, I asked. I'll just wait here with you. I'm fine down here in this giant, fresh, empty grave. Okay, bye. Hell no. <laughs> oh, 
I love this bit with the dole. You want to take the easy way out with this surgery because you're scared. And you're scared because if you try and fail, there's only you to blame. Life is scary. Turk's going to take this on board. There are no magical fixes. It's all up to you. So get up off your keister. Get out of here and go start doing the work. What if it's too hard? Turkleton, I have no <laughs> idea why you're chiming in, but I'll say this to both of you. Nothing in this world that's worth having comes easy. Oh, this is so weird. I don't really know what to say. Sorry, I haven't visited much. I've been kind of busy. I just know I really could have used you around this week. I miss you. Can you tell her I miss her too? You know what? Never mind. Because she wouldn't believe you. <laughs> That'll be $18. I'm a doctor. Yeah, we don't do that anymore. You're paying. <laughs> Girl, sorry. It's like that man's still got a business to run. You ready to come home? I'm trying to get there, Turk. I'm just not there yet. All right, you take a little time to me, okay? Do you mind sitting here with me for a little longer? Is anybody there? Anybody? Girl, just act like it's high jump or something. Keep it together, Ellie. Things could be worse. Oh dear God. I'm gonna die in a watery grave. Well, you guys, I really enjoyed both of those episodes. I loved every single second of them, especially seeing, especially seeing Phil Lewis, Mr. Mosby, Hooch. That was great. It was like being brought back to my childhood. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing bad to say about those two episodes. Anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the reaction, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for future Scrubs reactions and other videos that we'll be dropping along the way. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.